As Lu Sheng listened to the surrounding discussions, which were all about him, however, he looked as if he was deep in thought. Zhao saw this and looked at him thoughtfully. He vividly remembered what happened just minutes earlier. Perhaps Lu Sheng might still be shaken from his confrontation with Lian Jibei. He shook his head and thought Lu Sheng was, well, after all, still a kid. With a comforting voice, Zhao spoke up, urging him not to dwell too much on what happened earlier. He tells him that in the pursuit of the peak of martial arts, bloodshed is inevitable, and it's not his fault. With a more serious tone, Zhao then tells him that even if something had gone wrong, the Divine University would always have his back. Other vice principals gathered around, nodding in agreement as Zhao continued, End of the day, Ji Dao Martial Saint isn't the only ninth-level martial saint out there. Lu Sheng nodded as if he understood, though he still looked somewhat troubled. Zhao's gaze on Lu Sheng grew more complex as he began to understand why Lu Sheng had opted to forego the second task. When Lu Sheng hid behind his back after Lian Jibei got aggressive, and see how he is still shaken till now. In Zhao's eyes, it was natural for someone like Lu Sheng, or perhaps anyone his age to be scared when facing a grandmaster-level opponent. He let out a sigh, thinking to himself that while Lu Sheng possessed remarkable talent, expecting him to also have the courage and temperament of a seasoned martial artist was simply asking too much. However, Zhao felt a pang of regret since becoming a disciple of a martial saint required more than just talent. It saddens him to see that as the tournament progressed, the chances of Lu Sheng becoming a disciple of the martial saint become slimer. Shaking his head, Zhao then walked away. You must have been wondering why Lu Sheng hid behind Zhao. Why hadn't he kicked Lian Jibei's ass? Could it be that the author had too much booze and forgot how powerful our boy really was? But of course, that wasn't the case. It turned out that everything was part of Lu Sheng's act. He had intentionally made himself appear fearful and hidden behind Zhao, setting the stage for his next plan. Obviously, it worked out, and Lu Sheng's acting was on point, thus everyone believed him. With a cold smirk, Lu Sheng turned his gaze towards Lian Jibei. Although he couldn't see his face, he could imagine how furious he must be. Lu Sheng will for sure get rid of Lian Jibei, however. He has other plans for him. The competition was far from over, swiftly moving into the ninth round. On the stage stood the last four contenders, Lu Sheng, Jack, a blue-haired girl, and a middle-aged man from the Heaven and Earth Martial School, who was notably the oldest out of the four. This middle-aged man had participated in four previous martial arts tournaments. However, his progress to this point in the tournament owed as much to good luck as to his skill. He looked calm and composed on the outside. However, internally, he was screaming. After all, he didn't stand a chance against any of the three. Recalling most people who went up against Jack had ended up severely injured, and considering just how strong Lu Sheng was, he hoped desperately to face the blue-haired girl instead. She was cute, amiable, and much more gentle in her attacks, even apologizing if she accidentally hurt her opponent. In his eyes, she was practically an angel. Trying to maintain his composure, he approached the draw box. Gritting his teeth, he drew his lot, and to his surprise, his expression shifted to one of sheer relief. His luck had turned out to be incredibly good once again. Jack was next, however, his expression souring instantly. Observing this, Lu Sheng couldn't help but step forward. Clapping Jack on the shoulder and leaning close to offer some cheeky advice, he told him that there was no need to worry. There was still time to buy insurance. He even went so far as to offer to recommend a reliable company, where the payout was so swift it came the day after a client's demise. Jack jerked his head up at these words, his face breaking into a sweat as he quickly shrugged off Lu Sheng's hand, his body trembling as he stared back at him. Lu Sheng chuckled, easing the tension by saying it was just a joke, then said, after all, he was still wary of Lian Jibei himself. Hearing this, Jack was more relaxed, though his voice still trembled a bit as he retorted, telling Lu Sheng to not treat him as Doug or underestimate him. Lu Sheng shook his head, and walked a few steps forward while whispering he thought Jack was actually worse than Doug. A lot of trash talk from Lu Sheng. Holy moly. Afterward, leaving no room for further banter before he stepped off the platform to prepare for the next match, Jack stayed on the stage a bit longer, perhaps a bit stunned. He then glowered at Lu Sheng before finally walking down. Meanwhile, at the Ji Dao Martial School's side, Jack was whispering to Lian Jibei, both keeping their eyes on Lu Sheng. From the look, they didn't seem very happy, 
Leon Jibay's gaze was cold and menacing, his teeth clenched as he internally vowed to make Lu Sheng pay eventually. Lu Sheng, aware of the murderous intent directed at him from behind, knew his trash talk had effectively made the two mad. Lu Sheng sighed, fully aware that if he were to ever take drastic action against Leon Jibay, he needed a justified cause, one that would make everyone agree that it was deserved. Such a scenario would smooth the path for whatever came next. The growth in his martial prowess made him acutely aware of his current limitations. In the face of true power, he had to play by others' rules. If he were strong enough, he could disregard the dictates not only Ji Dao Martial School, but also Martial Saints. However, what comes Lian Jibei's way is fully deserved, especially since Lian Jibei and his son were already marked by their egregious sins. For now, he couldn't act as he wished, even when dealing with awful criminals. To alter the course of history, he needed to become the strongest, to set his own rules. Thus, he knew he must continue to strive harder. As the match between the blue-haired girl and the middle-aged man from the Heaven and Earth Martial School finished, surprisingly it took longer than most had anticipated, lasting a full ten minutes before a winner was declared. To the audience, it seemed like a thrilling fight, but only the two of them knew it was largely staged. The middle-aged man likely pleaded with the girl to spare him the embarrassment of a quick defeat, allowing him to retain his dignity in public. Great Grandmaster Jiang recognized the act, but simply shook his head, his gaze then drifting to Lu Sheng, suspecting the next match would not proceed as smoothly. Then came the moment everyone had been waiting for, the exciting match of Lu Sheng versus Jack. The atmosphere in the arena shifted dramatically as they took the stage. The crowd buzzed with rumors of how Lu Sheng had kicked Doug's ass, and many cheered. Turned out that Doug was an awful person and had done some awful things over the years. Most of the people who got onto the stage with him fell victim, which left most of them either severely injured or even handicapped. The general consensus was a desire to see the Ji Dao school humiliated, and some even jokingly suggested renaming Jack, one of the twin stars to Disabled Star, after the fight. Jack's face turned pale as he heard the whispers around him, which did not help with his growing fear. Despite his status as one of the most talented martial artists of the Ji Dao Martial School, he couldn't understand why he felt such intense fear against a guy younger than him. He tried to compose himself repeatedly, but his anxiety wouldn't settle. As Jack was lost in his nerves, Lu Sheng's voice snapped him back to reality, telling him that it was time to take the stage and get beaten. Jack gulped, then realized he shouldn't be backing down from trash talk. He then suggested that there was still time for Lu Sheng to grab a melee weapon. Otherwise, it would seem like Jack was bullying him if he won. Lu Sheng just looked at him as if he were an idiot, and looking into Lu Sheng's eyes, all of the courage Jack had mustered instantly seemed to drain away once more. The two of them stepped onto the stage, and Jack took a final look at Lian Ji Bei, which once again boosted his confidence. Then, turning to Lu Sheng, he bellowed, saying Lu Sheng was merely putting on a show and trying to scare him. Soon after, the referee announced the start of the match. Lu Sheng remained unfazed. He looked calm, standing casually in place. Jack continually speculated from which direction Lu Sheng would attack. Confident in his own speed, Jack believed he could dodge any of Lu Sheng's strikes. Seeing how Lu Sheng is yet to make a move, he decided to go on the offensive. However, moments later, he halted. Lu Sheng had yet to make a move, but Jack felt something ominous spreading in the air, invisible yet palpably dangerous. Lu Sheng's stance seemed full of openings, yet he knew it was a trap. Jack knew he couldn't afford to be distracted any longer. He then used his first technique, channeling his internal energy throughout his body, concentrating it all in his feet. This was his secret technique, extreme speed. In the next instant, his figure vanished, charging at Lu Sheng like a bolt of lightning. He swiftly reached Lu Sheng and drew his dagger, thrusting it straight at him. Jack focused all his strength on this single strike, intending to finish off the fight. Jack's dagger pierced the air, even breaking the sound barrier. Zhao marveled at Jack's speed. At the same time, Great Grandmaster Jiang suddenly stood up, his eyes wide with amazement, whether from the beauty of the strike or something else he spotted. As Jack thrust his dagger, he was shocked to find Lu Sheng no longer in front of him. The next moment, he heard the sound of metal shattering. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. His dagger, a sixth-level melee weapon made of the finest materials, had split into pieces. By then, Lu Sheng was behind him, 
commenting on how slow Jack was. As Jack turned around, Lu Sheng's figure vanished again. Jack attempted another attack, but he couldn't keep up with Lu Sheng's movements, hearing only the repeated taunt, too slow, too slow, far too slow. The voice contained psychic energy. As Jack knelt on the stage, sweat pouring down his forehead, Lu Sheng's taunting voice echoed around him, yet he couldn't even catch a glimpse of his movement. The relentless pressure finally shattered Jack's composure completely. He crumpled, his hands clutching his head as he yelled in disbelief and despair. Impossible, Jack. His face went pale, his once prized speed seeming like a turtle before Lu Sheng. Suddenly, he was grabbed by his back collar, lifting him effortlessly off the ground. Lu Sheng felt a twinge of disappointment at how Jack collapsed so quickly. Seeing Lu Sheng's expression, Jack's face twisted in a grimace, his forehead beaded with sweat. Suddenly, veins bulging, his internal energy turned a vibrant green and radiated outward. Yet Lu Sheng's grip remained as tightly as ever seemingly unbothered by the wind, as if the energy emanating from Jack could do him no harm. Jack transformed all his internal energy into a whirlwind, however. Lu Sheng stood at the eye of the storm, calm as ever. Having exhausted all his strength, Jack roared, Taste the power of the wind blade! As he turned, the teal wind tousled his clothes, however, to his surprise, Lu Sheng was unaffected. He was baffled and wanted to say something, but in the next second, Lu Sheng released Jack's collar. Jack was stunned, his energy dissipating slowly as he turned to seek Lu Sheng, who had vanished from sight. Yet a calm voice reached him, telling him he would show him what is real speed. Jack scanned the surroundings, frantically searching. Suddenly, there was Lu Sheng, or rather, a lot of Lu Shengs appearing around him. At the sight, Jack froze on the spot. Countless Lu Shengs, each with his hands in his pocket, slowly walked towards him. The audience gasped in disbelief, wondering how one could achieve such speed. Jack spun around, Surrounded by afterimages of Lu Sheng approached him from every direction. He heard them speak in unison, Find me, and you win. Seeing this, even the grandmasters stood abruptly, stepping forward in disbelief. Among them was Zhao, who was equally shocked, as he pondered to himself that residual visuals were left in the neural pathways of the eye. To generate multiple afterimages in a brief span was remarkable, but the number Lu Sheng achieved was simply unimaginable perhaps not even the Grandmaster could achieve. Jack frantically swung his shattered dagger at Lu Sheng, shouting, Fake! All fake! He was convinced that he would find the real one amidst his relentless attacks. Exhausting every ounce of his strength, after several minutes, just as Jack was about to give up, suddenly a pair of hands emerged from behind him, seizing his arms following some terrifying, bone-crushing sounds. In the next moment, all four of Jack's limbs twisted in unnatural ways and he collapsed to the ground like a broken doll, the intense pain nearly rendering him unconscious as he moaned helplessly. His jaw was dislocated, leaving him unable to speak. However, his eyes were fixed on Lu Sheng. Lu Sheng looked towards the twitching Jack and told him to consider this a repayment for what he had done to Bai and the other martial artists whose paths he destroyed. With those words, Lu Sheng turned away, not wasting a single second on Jack. The referee quickly approached, belatedly announcing Lu Sheng as the victor. Even the referee was shocked, yet at this moment, the spectator's eyes, which once filled with fear, now had a newfound respect for Lu Sheng. Many in the audience from universities and martial arts schools had their seniors severely injured by the Jidao martial school disciples. After Lu Sheng's decisive victories over their twin stars, his reputation soared from a mere prodigy to a figure they all respect. Even the senior from the transcendent martial school who had been encouraging the blue-haired girl, was no longer sure if it was a good idea to let her go up against Lu Sheng. The blue-haired girl, her nerves on edge, clenched her fists, beads of sweat forming on her forehead as if she saw something terrifying. After a brief rest, the final match was about to commence. As Great Grandmaster Jiang called the two martial artists to the stage, and when he called out her name, she suddenly lifted her head and raised her hands and said she wanted to forfeit. Hearing this, all eyes turned towards her, especially those of her fellow senior brothers and sisters. Both Lu Sheng and Great Grandmaster Jiang also turned their gaze towards her. She repeated what she said, then exchanged a brief glance with Lu Sheng before sprinting away. Lu Sheng, looking quite puzzled, watched her running away and started wondering why is she always running away from him. At the same time, 
The girl's heart pounded furiously as she ran. Perhaps due to conceding defeat in front of so many was nerve-wracking. But her trepidation was mostly due to Lu Sheng. She couldn't explain to others the world as she saw it now. All she saw was dark mist emanating from Lu Sheng, obscuring the sky so much so that it would be crazy to go up against him. Bai, having recovered somewhat from his earlier injuries, his arm in a cast and leaning on a crutch, had come slowly to watch Lu Sheng's matches. However, he was surprised to see this very outcome. The principal supporting Bai chuckled a bit at the sight. Nonetheless, the outcome was clear. No one could defeat Lu Sheng, who claimed the championship representing the Divine University. After a while, Great Grandmaster Jiang returned to the center of the stage. Clearing his throat to capture everyone's attention, he declared that the National Collegiate Martial Arts Tournament had come to a perfect close. Soon after, cheers erupted from the crowd, with all eyes converging on one person. Everyone began chanting his name, all cameras. Hundreds of them surrounded him, snapping pictures nonstop from every conceivable angle. The students from Seven Divine University were the loudest and most excited of all. Meanwhile, in the capital, a group of girls gathered around in their dormitory, staring at the large screen featuring Lu Sheng. One of the girls, visibly excited and a bit envious, turned to Yang and teased her by saying that her boyfriend was incredibly handsome. Yang, while tying her hair, blushed and hurriedly clarified that he was not her boyfriend, but just a fellow classmate. Yet, as she looked back at the screen, it was hard to hide the joy and thrill in her eyes. In White Lake City, the family was gathered in front of the television, watching the tournament. Lu Qing leaped from the sofa, exclaiming excitedly, Big Brother won first place. He's the champion of the National Martial Arts Tournament. Her parents, supporting each other, watched the scene joyously. At the thought of something, the father quickly grabbed his phone, ready to book a restaurant to celebrate with relatives. However, Lu Qing pointed at the TV, urging her parents to wait and watch Lu Sheng's award ceremony first. Realizing their hastiness, the couple hurried back to their seats in front of the TV. At the Dongning Marshall University, in a double dormitory, Amelia watched the screen intently, her cheeks flushed with excitement. Luna glanced at her and let out a sigh, reflecting on how far Lu Sheng had come. Thinking back to their first meeting and the things they had been through felt almost dreamlike. Seeing Amelia's expression, she felt a bit worried. Amelia sensed her concern and smiled back at her, glancing at her phone. She tells her that she liked that she could still see him in the news and send him messages, though her voice faded as she admitted that Lu Sheng probably never read them, much less replied. Over at the Eastern Military District, Chin was animatedly watching the screen, amazed at how incredible Lu Sheng had turned out to be. He then reclined in his chair, remarking that the general would be thrilled to see this. Their investment in Lu Sheng had certainly paid off, and soon they would be seeing him. Nearby, Snowy commented, saying that's not necessarily the case. She was proud to see Lu Sheng reach this point, but her feelings were mixed. Chin, puzzled, asked Snowy what she meant. He added that Lu Sheng had promised to join the Eastern Military District after graduation and was known for keeping his promises. Snowy agreed, however. She mentioned that behind Lu Sheng was Seventh Divine University, and beyond that, the Martial Saint, Tan Zhongyue, who likely had his eyes set on Lu Sheng for a while. She didn't think any of the military districts could compete with the influence of a Martial Saint. Chin scratched his head, uncertain whether to feel disappointed or happy for Lu Sheng. Turned out, he was really looking forward to fighting alongside him on the battlefield. As Snowy offered some comforting words, saying that there would indeed be a day for everything, she quickly shifted the conversation, informing Chin to get ready. The 85th Combat Zone had discovered a new opening in an underground cave, and they were likely to be deployed within the next few days. Chin looked somewhat distressed, given that they had barely had any rest before facing another mission. However, their attention was abruptly drawn back to the screen, and they stood up in shock as an unexpected voice cut through the cheers of the crowd bringing a sudden silence to the bustling arena. Everyone turned towards the source of the sound. Lu Sheng was seen slowly speaking up, his finger pointing toward the Jidao Martial School. He respectfully bowed to the great grandmaster before taking the microphone as he announced that he wanted to challenge Lian Jibei.